Hi everyone, Alex from Summer Hill here just with another quick update. In today's update we'll cover some changes to superannuation which came into effect from 1 July, an update on markets and a reminder that unit prices for managed funds drop from the 2nd of July after the payment of year-end investment distributions. So you may see a fall in the value of your portfolio from 2nd July until when the distribution's paid into the account here by mid-July. Starting with changes to superannuation, a few of the more notable changes uh, which came into effect from 1 July 2022 are the superannuation guarantee rate increased from 10 to 10.5% and is set to rise again to 11% from 1 July 2023. Your employer is also now required to make quarterly SG contributions if you're an eligible employee, regardless of how much you're paid. Moving on, the eligibility age for making a downsizer superannuation contribution reduces from age 65 to 60. The new government has also proposed to further reduce the eligibility age to 55 from 1 July this year, but that's yet to be legislated. As a reminder, the downsizer contribution allows you to make a contribution to super up to 300,000 or 600,000 if you're a couple, provided you're over the age of 60 and sell your home for which you have owned for more than 10 years. Another change is that if you are under age 75, you're now eligible to make non-concessional after-tax personal super contributions, including the ability to use the bring forward rule, even if you're not working. However, you will still need to meet the work test to make tax deductible personal super contributions after age 67. Uh, these are positive changes as it will allow more flexibility to increase wealth in the tax effective superannuation environment. Finally, the government has extended the temporary 50% reduction in the minimum drawdown rates for account based pensions and similar products until 30 June 2023. This will allow those with an account based pension to draw a lower minimum amount from their pension which ultimately maximises the wealth that can be retained in uh, the tax-free pension environment. So it can be quite useful for those with assets to draw upon outside of their pension for, for living needs. Now, we will obviously assess whether you should be adjusting your strategy to take advantage of these changes, and we'll discuss this uh, specifically with you at your planning meeting, if it's appropriate. Just moving on, an update on markets. Uh, markets have continued to remain highly volatile this calendar year. With the easy money and low interest rates now reversing, it's having quite a large impact, particularly on speculative assets like tech stocks and cryptocurrencies. I mean, Bitcoin's down 70% from its highs last year. And just quickly, in relation to cryptocurrencies, the exposure of major banks and mainstream investors to crypto is, is relatively low. So it's very unlikely that these large falls we're seeing in that area of the market uh, will result in a, a GFC style moment. As you know, we do not recommend crypto investing for our clients, given trying to identify the fundamental value of such assets is just next to impossible. Now, the key drivers for the recent volatility are rising inflation, which has been made worse by the war in Ukraine and Chinese lockdowns, uh, the concerns around interest rates rising faster than expected to address inflation, and finally, the possibility of a recession due to the impact of such rising interest rates. Now, many economists are trying to guess the outlook of inflation and interest rates over the next year or two, but the reality is that there is no consensus because there are far too many unknowns, such as how long will the war in Ukraine last and the associated spike in energy and commodity prices? Uh, when will the supply chain challenges around the world ease? When will China open up again? And how will central banks be able to balance the slowing rate of inflation without causing a recession? It's worth noting that there are a number of factors at play at present which would appear to mitigate against the worst case outcomes. Uh, these are such as company profits and balance sheets around the developed markets continue to remain sound, at least for the time being. Unemployment also remains quite low in major economies and households still have cash accumulated resulting from the pandemic uh, lockdowns 
which can help act as a bit of a buffer. It's still far too early to say that markets have bottomed and things may get worse before they get better. Uh, now, market falls are stressful and no one likes to see the value of their investments fall, uh, but there are some key things to keep in mind. Uh, one, the, uh, the interest rates rising, this is part of a return to normality. Uh, the past few years, we've seen some of the lowest interest rates in recorded history. Rates were always going to rise again with the unwinding of the interventions during the COVID pandemic. And as a result, there was always going to be some sort of volatility with that unwinding and correction. Uh, two, periodic share market corrections are normal and they're a part of investing in shares. In the last decade, we've seen four market pullbacks of greater than 20%. While these falls can be painful, they are healthy as they can help limit some of the excessive risk taking. Three, uh, when shares fall in value, they can offer an attractive buying opportunity given the higher long-term return prospects. And finally, while share part, uh, prices have fallen, dividends have not. Australian shares are offering a very attractive dividend yield compared to bank deposits, uh, despite the rising deposit uh, interest rate environment. The drivers for market pullbacks are always slightly different. And although history may not repeat itself, it does tend to rhyme and so is with share market falls. Uh, this means that from the point of fundamental investment principles, uh, the response for what you should do uh, may sound quite familiar, uh, but in these volatile times, I guess we wanted to reiterate a couple of the points. Short-term forecasting is fought with danger and it should not be the basis for a long-term investment strategy. So it's best to adopt a well-thought-out long-term financial strategy and stick to it. Focus on your personal goals and what you can control. Practice smart, well thought out diversification. Diversification across asset classes, countries and securities. Diversification is one of the most useful tools to manage risk in a world where no one can accurately and consistently predict the future. Avoid trading in and out of markets. The danger of trading in and out of markets was only highlighted further during the pandemic volatility in 2020 where those who exited their investments during the panic missed out on the quite sharp recovery of markets in the following 12 months. Avoid acting on emotion. Selling shares and switching to a more conservative investment strategy whenever shares fall just turns a paper loss into a real loss with no hope of recovery. Even if you get out and miss, a, miss out on the further falls, there is the risk that you won't feel confident to get back in until after the market has risen back and fully recovered. And finally, don't let the mainstream media influence your decision, goals and investment strategy. At times on uncertainty like now, the flow of negative news goes into overdrive. Talk of billions being wiped off the share markets and crashes help sell and generate uh, sell news and generate clicks but these news sources provide no perspective uh, to the recent volatility and only add to a sense of uh, panic that's it from us for today as always we would appreciate any comments or feedback around uh, topics you might want covered in future video updates thank you